The protesters, who are mostly youth, say the most recent of the attacks was on January 5 this year, when two indigents drowned after pirates attacked the boat. They said despite the multinational companies in the area and launch of Operation Sting by the River State Government, there has been no improvement in the security situation in Bonny Island. After a few hours, they were attended to by the Commissioner for Youth Development, where they read their five-point agenda. No one is having peace. You don't sleep with your eyes closed any longer on the island. And so we said to say, okay, let's come and meet our father. That's why he's there. We voted for him. And one of the reasons he promised to give us is security. We are protecting because of the killings on our waterways. We are tired. See, our elders have been kidnapped for four months. No news about them. No, no issues, no cares about them. See, our lives matter to this country. The key demand is to put houseboats, security houseboats, at strategic points along the Portagot Sea routes with an ambulance and with security personnel. We cannot travel by a public boat. The way we used to travel, we cannot travel like that. People are dying. Our mothers are being raped. Our sisters are being raped. In his response, the commissioner assured that the message will be delivered. Also, Deputy Commissioner of Police and River State, Yomi Oladimeji, urged members of the public to provide the police with adequate information. I want to give you an assurance. This thing will get to the governor today. And the governor will liaise with all relevant stakeholders. If you believe that the information is not safe in the hands of even the OC Marine here, don't hesitate to come straight to headquarters here and inform the commissioner of police. But the local government area can only be accessed through the high sea, as the federal government's 37-kilometer bridge, which cost 120 billion naira and is meant to connect the islands to the mainland in River State, is yet to be completed. You're welcome back. What you just watched was residents of Boni local government area of River State protesting at the government house Port Harcourt lamenting the incessant killings and attacks by pirates on their waterway for many years. We have now joining us Goto Jumbo, editor-in-chief of Christina Reports. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Yes, good morning. Now, for many years, residents of the Niger Delta have, you know, complained about sea piracy and kidnappings. But we find that this, this issue, as serious as it is, is not, you know, being discussed as you would find, you know, the insurgency in the Northeast, but it's just as important. So could you kindly give us a sense of, you know, the seriousness of this issue and how it's affecting people in the Niger Delta? Okay, the Niger Delta is actually clusters of communities spread across Akwaibom all the way to on those states. Now, these communities are connected by rivers, by creeks, and uh, other forms of waterways. Now, for people to travel from the urban area, like Potakot, like Uyo, like Calabar, to some of these communities, they have to travel by sea. Now, Boni Island is one of such places. You know, Boni Island is the host of the Nigeria NLNG, the Shell uh, Boni Kudoi Terminal, the Eximobile Boni River Terminal, and several other federal government investments. Now, the only way to access Boni is by sea, except uh, recently when the NLNG introduced uh, a flight service uh, basically for its staff. Now, this, this, the Boni Sea Route comprises the Boni River and then other creeks that take you to other communities outside the mainland. Now, for you to go to your village, for you to go to Potako, to Boni, you have to travel by sea. And the same applies to Kola, to Bile, to other parts of you know, the river states and the Niger Delta. Now, somehow, you know, unfortunately, some criminals, some hoodlums have made it a hobby to go harassing travelers, terrorizing travelers on these this, uh, waterways. You find them robbing people on the sea, maiming, killing, you know, kidnapping. In fact, Boni, in the case of Boni, it's been very, very terrible. 
that even women are raped right there in the open sea. You know, when they across the boats they want to attack, you know, they 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 injure the men, sometimes they cut them with cutlasses, sometimes they order everybody into the river, they don't want to know whether you can swim or not, and then they order you out into the river. And then for the women, in fact, there was a case, you know, some three or four years ago that some women were raped, including a pregnant woman, you know, under broad daylight. And then all these situations, and this is not, you know, peculiar to any particular waterway. Those traveling to Kula are experiencing the same thing. Those traveling to Bile and other places. Now, in the case of Boni, it's an issue because Boni hosts, a, you know, a, a cumulative investment of the federal government you know, in excess of one trillion naira annually. And we, we are worried that the place that holds so much value for the Nigerian federal government can be so neglected that people have to, you know, travel with their hearts, you know, in their mouth. Every Thank time you Mr. pray from one end to the other, Mr. until Mr. you embark from the boat at the other end, you know, you don't feel safe. Mr. So Jumbo, this is the situation uh, we're dealing with. Um, it's, um, you've painted a very, very you know, sad picture. And you know, this you know, might also be seen as a continuing conversation from the abandonment of the Niger Delta uh, over, over the years uh, that have, uh, has, of course, led to you know, little riots here and there, you know, right from, you know, if you want to look back at the Kensarua days also. Uh, but I, I want you to share your thoughts on the government's efforts at you know, making the Niger Delta safe and the waterways in the Niger Delta safe. Uh, the River State government, you know, had um, made some investment, donated gunboats, you know, there's something called Operation Sting. I also read about uh, the Nigerian army having its own operation. I'm going to have to find the name of that. Uh, yes, it's called Exercise Shark Shiver. Um, so there are these military exercises. There's investment by the government in, in, um, with regard to security. How come they are not working? And uh, tell us, you know, what you know about that. Okay, yes, I will acknowledge the efforts of the River State Government. I, I cannot say for the, some other states like Bayasa, Kwaibom, Delta, and all of that, but for River State, the, the Executive Governor of River State, His Excellency uh, Chief Nyeson Wike, has you know, bought gunboats at different times for the security agencies. Now, I think the challenge is having to leave it to the local authorities to, to manage like you know having the local governments to quell them to you know take care of the personnel who man these gun boots now i think that's where the fault line is for the governor himself he's been proactive every time he's been called upon you know to intervene in this issue of insecurity on the waterways he has responded you know adequately but managing them you know that's where the problem is and we think he may need to pay a little more attention to what actually happens, because the gunboats will not man themselves, the gunboats will not quell themselves, and the security agencies, you know, need the, 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 the funding, you know, the provision of all these supportive resources to be able to drive that. And yes, if we talk about the Nigerian army, like the, the 146 battalion based, based in Boni, and then the operation, operation Delta Save, the forward operation base in Boni and other uh, localities. These security agencies, you know, for me, in the course of my interface with them, I have seen that passion, I've seen that commitment, I've seen that dedication, you know, to want to, you know, intervene in these situations. But they, 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 they are limited, they are incapacitated by, by the right funding. So we think the, the governor and the federal authorities need to look beyond just providing gunboats for them. They need to look at just providing, uh, you know, rifles and other things for them. They have to, what, what about the, the cartridges? Are they, are, do they have enough? What about the fueling of the gunboats? What about the, the area surveillance? I think the Nigerian Air Force needs to overwatch, you know, from the air, these waterways so that they can provide better better intelligence you know for for the, the the ground troops who are you know 
surveilling the area in the gunboats. All right, Mr. Jumbo, what was what was showing on the screen right now? Uh, youths protesting, you know, the killings of uh, students, killings of people on the waterways. And uh, on Tuesday, January 5th, 2021, sea pirates allegedly killed a former student's union leader and yet another student in a creek community. This has now sparked protests at a government house. Please walk us through these events and what the government is saying about this after the protest. Okay, fine. For the, the incident of you know, uh, January 5th, that's like, you know, where the, the climax, uh, you know, happened. Now, on the 5th, these people went to one of the communities called Dema Abbey, you know, to a uh, part of the festivities of the period. And then they were on their way back to the mainland, Bonimain town, when these sea pirates accosted them in the night between 8 and 9 p.m and then ordered everybody into the boat. And these particular two young men, we don't know what particularly, you know, pissed them off with them, and they had to kill them. And, you know, in killing them, they didn't just kill them. They butchered these two young men. You need to see the pictures, you know, that emanated from that incident. They butchered them, and then before dumping them in the river and, you know, walking away in, with their boats and all their properties phones, bags, and whatever else. Now, the, these, these two guys, like the guy you mentioned, the former uh, Bonny student uh, president. Now, that is just one of many incidents. On the 12th of September, 2020, five, five uh, senior citizens of Bonny, you know, uh, LGA, were weeks away, kidnapped from one of the communities, Banigo, that will be the Banigo Five, right? Yes, that's the Banigo Five. They whisk them away, and this is, you know, four months, and they are not, they are still in captivity. They've not been rescued. And then you can you can backtrack to several incidents. You know, it's even, you know, affecting even the high seas. Ships have been attacked. You know, on the high sea. You 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 remember the Max Shea Line. You remember the NLNG yes. uh, ship. You. Oh, the Cadiz B, all of that. These are incidents that are happening on that river. Now, it, it is assuming a dimension that is not only daily. Sometimes it is the attempt. Somehow, somehow maybe the, the pilots of the boat are smart enough to, you know, speed away and they are not able to catch up with them. In one particular instance, the pilot of the boat had to drive the boat into the mangrove and ask the passengers to run into the bush. And so when these pirates eventually got to uh, where they were, you know, they, they couldn't find them. So they had to leave with the, all the properties. They had to evacuate all the properties in the boat into their own and, and drive away. In some cases, like the case of the blessing Dan Jumbo, you know, they accosted the boat, ordered everybody into the mud, and then took him away. And up till now, we, we haven't seen him. We don't know what has happened to him, whether he's alive or not. Jumbo, in another case, it's, Jumbo, yes, it's ju ju just a minute, please. This issue of the yes. Banigo Five, it's so important because these guys have been missing for, I mean, since last year, since last year, they've been missing five men. They, they eventually, or they actually demanded 150 million naira ransom that was later reduced to about 30, then 15 million. This ransom was paid. These people are still not found. Why would you think that, you know, this issue of kidnappings and, you know, paying ransom still persists in the Niger Delta today, despite the best, you know, effort of the government? Okay, yes, I'm aware that, you know, 15 million was paid and uh, somehow it was paid in two tranches, 5 million, and later, you know, uh, 10 million. Now, now when... When this money was paid, we understand that the kidnappers, you know, changed the goalpost in the middle of the match. And that convoluted the whole process. Now, the security agencies, you know, are, are trying to, you know, also work on how to locate them and see they can retrieve these men from them. But the issue of, you know, a, a, a kidnap for ransom is being fueled by the perception 
that this is business. The perception that, you know, you could actually make a fortune from this. And, you know, the, the, the security environment around the Niger Delta is so porous that, you know, uh, small arms and light weapons can get around easily from one area to the other. So if you could get access to weapons to use to intimidate people, to kidnap people and all of that, and you have locations where you could keep them and they cannot be traced. So why wouldn't you want to, you know, go into this? And then the bigger issue is the one that, you know, these young men, you know, are getting patronage from the political class. They, they, they deploy them during elections. They deploy them during uh, certain situations to be able to, you know, achieve certain things for themselves. And then you, you have a problem. The security agencies, they apprehend them, and before you know it, calls are made and they are asked to be released. So this is the situation we are dealing with. That's so all. ordinarily, this is where the interest to want to continue in this line of business. The, um, um, one of the things that was mentioned was the failure to fix a bridge, uh, at least to limit the uh, traffic on the waterways and to, of course, give uh, uh, citizens an option um, you know, where, you know, they can, of course, go across, you know, places in the Niger Delta. The federal government um, has not finished that bridge. I think it's a 37-kilometer bridge, I believe, um, that has still not been finished. So I, I would like you to quickly speak on that, um, the efforts, you know, that have been put into convincing the federal government or maybe funding so that, that, so that alternative routes basically can be created for people in the Niger Delta. Um, so you would, I, would, I would like you to speak on that. And then second... The um, conversation, and this is what I've noticed, is one thing I mentioned earlier, the conversation about the proliferation and the presence of arms and ammunition all over the Niger Delta really has not been addressed. The militarization of the Niger Delta really is it's a situation that seems to have been ignored simply because you know, there's not a lot of pipelines being bombed anymore. Um, and so, of course, um, the movement for the emancipation of the Niger Delta and other groups like that seem to be quiet. But we, we have taken advantage or taken, you know, that silence to almost seem like there's no problem. But obviously, there is a problem in the Niger Delta with these, um, you know, militants and criminals. So, um, first of all, speak on alternative routes and the government's ability to create or, you know, fix that bridge. And then second the militants in the Niger Delta that seems to be ignored across the country um, in the last few years? Okay, yes, they actually, you know, the, the Boni Bodo Road is under con construction as we speak. That is one of the measures being taken to create an alternative. But the Boni people are also asking, there is a particular project called the Boni Ring Road, which is supposed to connect all the communities you know, in Boni to the mainland. Now, that uh, project was supposed to be done by the NDDT. They mobilized the site, and before you know it, they disappeared. And up to now, nothing, no action has been taken. And the Boni people are demanding, in the course of this protest, as one of the, 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 the demands, that that road needs to be paid attention to. The federal government, the NDDC, the River State government need to synergize and get that road off the ground. If that road is constructed, there will be alternatives. People will not be traveling by the river, you know, and then be exposed to all these kind of, you know, unfavorable situations. So they are demanding for that road. And in, uh, another, another measure is, you know, for, there is a flight service the NLNG has introduced to Boni, but it's mainly for its staff. We are also asking, why not expand that service to be a full-fledged, you know, commercialized uh, 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 service so that other airlines can fly into Boni. Because as we speak, Boni is no more a small community. Boni is a cosmopolitan environment that everybody comes to, Nigerians, foreigners, you know. And you know, the 27 project is bringing about 70,000 people to that island. And a lot of these people, a, a major fraction of these people you know, will be coming from other parts of Nigeria and even, you know, uh, parts of the world. Now, 
we, we, we think that airport needs to take off the ground so that people can also fly in, people can drive in, and then if you want to use the waterways, you can still use it. So you have options. You know, that would de-escalate this, the, 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 this uh, tragedy that the people of uh, Boni are facing. Then talking about the, the Niger Delta militants, promises were made to these young men to drop their arms. You remember the amnesty program of yes. the, the late uh, president, Yeradua? That program, is it being properly in implemented? We need to ask. For Boni in particular, the, the agitators who were bearing arms in the days of the militancy, they were brought together and a covenant was made between them and the authorities. They dropped their arms and then promises were made in terms of empowering them with jobs and other resources. We, we are asking, those promises, have they been fulfilled? Have they been fulfilled? Because, you know, you have to survive. And for these young men, some of them lack education, some of them lack skills, some of them, even that are educated and have the skills, don't have the resources to push their economic fortunes beyond the level they are. So you, you find that, you know, criminality becomes, you know, attractive in, in, in the face of frustration, in the face of, you know, disempowerment. So we think the federal government needs to liaise with the state government to be able to intervene in this area. And then we think also that the, the security agencies need to, you know, go full scale into mopping up arms across the Niger Delta. Across the Niger Delta is important, you know, because these weapons are available. You know, as a journalist, you know, you, you, you find a situation where you just know where and where uh, uh, these weapons can be cut in, you know, easily. And if it is like that, then it's a problem. So the security agencies need to look at how to mop up these small arms and light weapons across the length and breadth of the Niger Delta so right. that people can be able to, you know, live their life safely Finally. and in a clean environment. Finally, um, of course, as we would continue to hope and pray that the Banigo Five return to their families and uh, uh, they are reunited with their communities, I, I want you to quickly just share with us your maybe top two um, immediate solutions that must come into play here to ensure that the Niger Delta is safer for its residents and for people who want to use the waterways. Suggestion, uh, suggesting um, you know, that the roads and bridges are built and, of course, the airways are also um, uh, made as alternative routes, yes, is a good thing, but it, you know, we should not live in a society where we're scared of our water and our waterways. So quickly share with us you know, maybe top two immediate solutions that must come into play here um, in the next one minute so we can wrap this up. Okay, for the media, I think we need to step up. Journalists in Nigeria need to step up. Boko Haram is not the only challenge, security challenge facing in Nigeria. Insecurity in the Niger Delta is an issue. So we need to mainstream it. We need to prioritize it. We need to put it where the authorities will see that these things are happening. And we need to ensure that political actors do not succeed in sweeping these uh, incidents, these issues under the carpet. The problem is there and they have to be faced head on, you know? And then we also need to uh, uh, shy away from scaremongering. We're not saying that, you know, it is so bad that, you know, on a good day, you cannot travel from one point to the other. We are saying that, you know, you travel and then surprisingly, a day maybe you are not thinking, they just show up. So while the security agencies are doing their own, we also expect that there should be serious stakeholder engagement, you know, in the course of managing this. Because part of the problem also has to do with militarization of the Niger Delta. If the security agencies are all over the place and you can't have a voice, you can't go about your, your daily activities, you know, in peace, that people are being harassed, that for one reason or the other people are arrested arbitrarily, and locked up and all of that. That is also an issue. So right. we think that the security agencies need to engage the, the community actors, the political actors, the business community to be able to, you know, find a holistic solution to 
the, the, the issue okay, under Dr. review. Jumbo, um, th we're out of time. Thank you so much uh, for taking our time to share you know, with us. Uh, how you. bad the situation is, and we hope that um, you know it does improve and it does get better. The governor of River State and, of course, governors all across the Niger Delta uh, will continue to be encouraged to ensure that uh, security of lives and property is top priority in the Niger Delta. Thank you once again, uh, Mr. Jumbo. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Good morning to you. Right. I, the next uh, issue on our agenda would be fixed politics. Yes. We have uh, with us the Acton CEO School of Politics, Policy and Governance to, to tell us more about a school, an unconventional school, so to speak, that, would, that aims to train leaders and teach them about politics, leadership and good governance. And that would be right after this break. Just stay with us.